Uh, is Pepsi okay? Are there three more disappointing words from a waiter? When you've had your heart set on that sweet cola flavor, you'd already started imagining how it was going to taste on your tongue. Well, that's what it's like when you ask someone to drop you an AK and they give you a Galil. Psst. We love Pepsi too. Please don't hate us, Pepsi. Hi guys, and welcome to Pro Guides. I'm Dave, and today we're going to be answering a difficult question. Does the Galil suck? It's not as simple as a straight yes or no, and since Counter-Strike is Counter-Strike, every weapon will work differently depending on the player holding it. We'll be comparing the Galil to the AK for the most part, since during a round, those are the two you gotta choose between. We're gonna dive into the Galil's raw stats, its spray pattern, its effectiveness in different situations, and most importantly, its skins. Based on those, we're gonna come to a conclusion about whether or not the Galil sucks. Hop in, math nerds, because we're going to start with some juicy statistics. Let's open with the big one, damage. The damage value for the Galil is 30, the same as the CT's FAMAS. This comes in lower than the AK's 36 damage. We can't really talk about the damage without also talking about armor penetration. And a leg up the Galil has on the FAMAS is that its armor penetration is 77.5%, the same as the AK, higher than the FAMAS and even the M4 70%. This is great, and it gives us a straight up comparison between the Galil and the AK. Against armor, a Galil shot to the chest will do 23 damage, while an AK will do 27. The Galil's lower damage means you basically need an extra bullet to the chest in order to kill. Four shots for the AK, but five for the Galil. Now, if your background is in Call of Duty or another bullet sponge shooter, one bullet might not seem like a big deal, but in Counter-Strike, it's everything. That one bullet may only take a fraction of a second to fire, but when that one bullet is the difference between life and death, it's a big deal. To compensate for this, the Galil has a higher rate of fire. Unfortunately, it's still not enough. The higher damage of the AK means that it still takes longer to get a kill with a Galil than an AK. Admittedly, it's by a fraction of a second, but that one bullet makes all the difference. This puts the Galil in a disadvantage in any one-on-one -on -one duels against an AK, but these two weapons will rarely be pitted against each other in a match. Let's look at a CT comparison instead. Let's say the CTs are holding M4s, since they probably are. The Galil and the M4 share the same rate of fire. The M4 has a slightly higher damage, but lower armor penetration. These even each other out to provide very similar damage against armor. They have the same chest damage and tiny differences in stomach and leg damage. This means the time to kill for the M4 and the Galil are actually the same. Five bullets needed with the same rate of fire. For the Galil's price tag of just two grand, you basically have an M4 in your hands, and it even saves you 1100. That's enough for a stack of utility. So why does it have such a bad name? Well, there's one type of damage we haven't mentioned yet, and it's a big one, headshot damage. The Galil cannot kill in one bullet to the head, unlike its AK big brother. This is yet another similarity to the M4, but for a T-sided weapon, it's a huge deal. The CT side can get away with not being able to kill in one bullet because they usually have a positional advantage. They just need to hold the line. But for the T side, it's all about opening up choke points and bomb sites with instant kills. If a CT is shot in the head but able to fall back, it forces the T's to do so much more work. They need to invest a huge chunk of time and utility to finish the job. Another key stat to bear in mind is Galil's inaccuracy. This is how likely a bullet is to miss the center of your crosshair, even if you stood perfectly still. This is different to recoil. A player can control the recoil of a weapon to reduce its impact, but a weapon's inaccuracy is completely out of your hands. Now, it's not like the Galil's inaccuracy stat is stupidly high. Like, you won't miss every shot, but it is higher than most every other rifle. Only the FAMAS is higher in accuracy. That makes you more likely to have those getting CS goad moments with the Galil. If you stick to a medium range, it's very unlikely to be an issue. But this just rewards another point to the AK and its long range effectiveness. The Galil also has one of the higher recovery times amongst the rifles, so you'll find it trickier to have lots of short, accurate bursts in succession. This can be a problem on the T side once again. When you're approaching a site, you're constantly trying to push forward while also applying pressure to the CTs who are ducked behind cover. Push far enough forward, and you'll likely be facing two CTs at once as they attack you from two different angles. The Galil's poor recovery time means if you burst one down, then turn to burst the other, the weapon could still be resetting. That second burst would begin three or four bullets into the recoil and be harder to control. 
Speaking of recoil, let's take a look at the Galil spray pattern. The Galil holds an almighty 35 rounds in a magazine. So its spray pattern is longer than any other rifle too. Most rifles have a spray pattern that begin vertically. The Galil is a little different. It's similar to the SG553 in that its initial burst is more diagonal. It's still a pretty straight line, it's just diagonally straight. For anyone who hasn't practiced the Galil's pattern, this is usually an immediate turnoff for the weapon. You're used to the vertical start of the rifle spray patterns. So you do the same here, and your shots go over an enemy's shoulder. This can make the Galil's pattern feel unforgiving, but it's really not. If you look at the spray patterns of the other rifles, most follow the same pattern. They begin vertically, then do long horizontal sweeps from side to side. The Galil isn't much different. It's only its initial shots that are different diagonal instead of vertical. If you can master the beginning, then you can treat the rest of the spray as the same as the AK or M4. But if you begin the Galil spray with a vertical correction, it can feel like the Galil has an extra horizontal sweep, since you're immediately trying to correct that diagonal burst at the start. The Galil spray gets a lot of bad press, but it's not so different from the MK or AK. Just practice the opening and you'll be fine. So when should you use the Galil? We know it's not the best at getting opening frags, thanks to its lower headshot damage. We know it can't beat an AK in a duel, thanks to that lower time to kill. And we know it's not as consistent in long range duels as other rifles, thanks to that inaccuracy. So what on earth is it good for? Well, since so many statistics are the same or similar to an M4s, that's how you use it on your T side, just like you would an M4. You wouldn't put an M4 on your first player through a choke point for the same reasons as the Galil but you would put an M4 on your third player through the door. Your entry fragger will have created enough space for your Galil to get out of the choke point. From there, you can come in afterwards for spray downs and take over a site. With the bomb site in your control, your team becomes the defenders. And what's the go-to weapon for the defenders in CS? Why, it's the M4. And what weapon is statistically similar to the M4? The Galil. Obviously, you'd pick up an AK or M4 if you could but this is what the Galil is made for, short defensive bursts. That's why it's viewed so poorly as a T-side weapon. On the T-side, you have to be the aggressor, and the Galil just isn't built for that. So teams will take an SMG instead, so they can go phoning around corners for entry picks. Weapon statistics are all well and good, but what about the thing that really matters? Does the Galil have any good skins? Uh, kinda? I mean, a few, I guess. The Galil isn't as iconic as an AWP or AK, so we can't expect it to get as many interesting skins as those guys. We're mostly left with fairly generic colors and patterns, but there are a few that stand out. The Eco skin is bold but simple, and while using it, you can feel that little bit of sadness that that season never got the love it deserved in CSGO. The Tuxedo is a low-cost, simple skin that can make a statement in a sea of DD Paddle-like Galil skins. The rocket pop is bright and colorful. Something that's missing a lot in CSGO skins is an element of fun. And the rocket pop has buckets of fun. Lastly, we like the Cerberus from the Cash Collection. It's a color you don't see often in skins, lime green. I mean, maybe there's a reason for that. And maybe that reason is it's kind of gross, but it makes a statement and you could too with this skin. So let's wrap this up. We started today with one question. Does the Galil suck? The answer is mostly no. You wouldn't say the M4 sucked, would you? The disappointment of the Galil comes from how great the AK is and how the Galil comes so close to an AK, but not close enough. The biggest issue of the Galil is that too many players try and use it like an AK and are frustrated when it doesn't perform as well. Of course you can't take those same long range fights. Of course you can't take the one-on-one -on -one duels and expect to come out on top every time. Instead, you need to be using the Galil more like an M4. At the end of the day, it all comes down to personal preference. Some players will prefer the fast and furious aggressive T style, which suits more SMGs. Some will prefer to save up for the crisp headshot of an AK. And some will use the Galil as it's intended a mid-range enforcer to secure a push and lock down a bomb site. You know, it's not good, but it's not great. And that sums up the Galil. It's a $2,000 M4, and that's nothing to complain about. We just wish it was an AK. That's it from us today, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know in the comments what you think of the Galil. Do you love it? Tried it once and hated it? Get in touch. 
If you'd like to learn more tips and tricks for Counter-Strike's weapons, just like this one, be sure to check out ProGuides.com. Until next time, good luck in your matches.